Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael with IDB. Welcome back. In this video, I have even more iOS 16 features to go over with you. So if you missed my video yesterday, I covered all of the flagship features in iOS 16, which includes the new redesigned lock screen that now has widgets. So if you missed that video, I'll have it linked up here and also in the description down below. But for now, let's get into even more features in iOS 16. So first up is focus filters. So I'll jump inside settings and then click on focus. I'll choose a focus mode and all the way at the bottom, you can set up focus filters. So I'll give you an example as to how this is useful. So say you have a work focus and a personal focus. When you're in your work focus, you can set it up so you only see certain emails or calendar events or text messages from certain contacts. So I really think this is gonna help people separate their personal lives and their work lives. So when you're in your personal focus, uh, then you'll get all your personal calendar events and your personal emails from your friends and family. But when you're in your work focus, uh, you're only gonna see stuff that's irrelevant to your work. So having this extra setting in terms of filters on your focus modes uh, is a feature I really appreciate and it's gonna help out a lot of people. So next up is a feature I mentioned in my previous video, but there is an extension on this feature that I didn't mention. So in iOS 16, there's a feature called shared iCloud photo library, uh, where photos that you take on your phone inside the camera app, there's a toggle where you can choose which library the photo you're about to take is going to be stored. So you can see here this toggle, uh, when you're going to take a photo, uh, this is going to be shared to the shared library. Uh, but a feature I didn't mention is that this can be turned on automatically. So when your iPhone detects that you are nearby the members of this shared library, it'll turn this toggle on automatically inside the camera. So that's really cool. As soon as your iPhone detects uh, that you're around the people in your vicinity, uh, you won't even have to turn on this toggle. It'll just do it automatically for you. So everybody in your shared library gets all these photos. Next up is SharePlay in iMessage. So SharePlay before in iOS 15 only worked over FaceTime, but now you can do it over messages. So you can have a video playing in picture and picture and it's synced up with everyone who's using SharePlay. And then you can message about the show you're watching in real time. And all the changes you make to the video, such as fast forwarding or pausing it, will apply to everyone watching the video. So I really think this is something people wanted as they wanna be able to watch something together but they don't want to be on a FaceTime call the whole time they just want to be able to text them about the show for example so now you can have a share play or iMessage instead of just FaceTime uh, this is definitely a feature I think people have wanted next up is inside settings and then sounds and haptics you can scroll down to keyboard feedback and now in iOS 16 you can have a haptic feedback when you're using the keyboard so I tried this out on my iPhone and when you have sound and haptic turned on it really makes for a good type experience so when you get iOS 16 installed on your phone I'd highly recommend jumping into your sound settings and turn on haptic feedback for your keyboard next up is support for even more collaboration options so in iOS 16 you have the option to share notes keynote presentations reminders and even Safari tab groups which I am going to show you in this video so uh, every app that supports rich collaboration will have a share button and then you can share it with as many people as you want. And this is what the link is gonna look like in iMessage, uh, an option to collaborate here on whatever project you wanna share. So uh, a lot more collaboration options inside of iOS 16. I really think a lot of people are gonna like this. So next up in iOS 16 is inside of Mail. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the Mail app redesign that we wanted, but we did get a huge improvement to search. So I have my Gmail here and I tried it out and I find that the search does work a lot faster now. So I don't know what changes Apple has made, but when I'm searching for emails or certain senders or even file attachments in my emails, I find that search works a lot better and faster inside of iOS 16. And also new inside of Apple Mail is the option to undo a sent message. You can schedule a message and you can also get a reminder to follow up. So I have a draft here, and if I'm about to send a message, instead of just hitting the send button, you can actually press and hold on the send button, and you can choose to send at a certain time, and you can uh, set up a custom time you want your message to get sent at. So that's really nice. And also, once you send the message, if you uh, press and hold on the message, you'll also have the option to undo that sent message. 
And another feature, which is really cool, is if you have sent a message to somebody uh, and you haven't received a response yet, the mail app will know this and it'll give you a prompt to follow up on that email. So that's really cool. So next up, this is an extension on the collaboration features I mentioned previously. So you can have shared tab groups and you can collaborate inside of Safari. So if you have a tab group here, I just have one of two websites, you can hit this share icon and inside this menu, once you hit it, you'll get a collaborate button and then you can collaborate with people. For example, if you're working on a project, everybody can hop into this group of Safari tabs and they can add tabs or edit tabs, whatever they wanna do, uh, it just makes collaborating inside of Safari a lot better. Okay, next up, this one is really cool. If you have a photo of something and it's the main subject in the photo and it's obvious that it's the main thing in the photo, the iPhone is gonna know this and you can actually pick up the subject of the photo and remove it from the background using drag and drop. So this is a crazy out of the blue feature. We weren't expecting this from Apple at all. So if I just pick up this iPod, I can move it anywhere in iOS. So let's send it in messages. So as easy as that, I have picked up the subject of a photo and I can now send it away to whoever I want. So you can do this with all of your photos as long as the subject is clear and uh, right in the center of the frame. So this is really, really cool. Another great change in iOS 16 inside of the camera is the live text feature now supports quick actions. So if you point your camera at a uh, different language, it'll be able to convert that into English. And also if you point your camera at another currency, it'll be able to convert that into whatever currency you are using on your iPhone. So live text has gotten a lot smarter on the iPhone and I'll have a screenshot on the screen right now uh, to show you what this feature looks like. So next up in iOS 16 is there is a completely new default video player. So I have a YouTube video playing here in Safari. And as you can see, the UI looks a lot different. Uh, now the play and pause controls are right in the middle instead of at the bottom left corner. Uh, you can see the bar that shows your progress in the video uh, is a lot bolder. And overall, I just like the UI of this uh, now playing UI a lot better uh, than it was in iOS 15. But since I'm playing a video, I have an option to show you another new feature, which is called live text in video. So if you're playing a video and you pause it and you just wanna be able to copy some text that's on the screen, you can do this. All you have to do is just press and hold where the text is. And as easy as that, you can actually select the text as you can see there in the video. So I have some text selected uh, right there. Uh, it's a little bit small, but you still can see it. So the ability to select any text on your screen, even if it's text that's playing in a video is a really, really powerful feature. And another new change inside of iOS 16 is updates to dictation. So there are a few updates. Number one is automatic punctuation. So the iPhone will be able to automatically add a question mark if your sentence ends in an upward swoop like this. And it can also add a period and a comma. I can't get it to work in this beta right now. And another new feature is the ability to have access to your keyboard while you're dictating a message. So once again, I can't get it to work in this beta. It's just the first beta of iOS 16. So hopefully this will be enabled later on. But uh, in essence, you should have the ability to access your keyboard and type at the same time that you're dictating your message. But as you can see, it's not enabled right here, but this will be a very powerful feature that will allow you to input text a lot faster in iOS 16. All right, here's another really awesome change in iOS 16. When you have headphones connected to your phone and you open settings, the headphones now automatically show up at the top of the settings page. So you can see here, it says Michael's AirPods. I can click on this and I can get to all of my settings. Uh, we also have kind of a new UI here at the top, which kind of shows a graphical overview of my headphones. And you can control all of your AirPod settings as you would expect in this page right here. So once they're connected via Bluetooth, I'm guessing this will work with any H1 enabled chip. So it'll also work with Beats headphones, uh, it's really convenient that they show up uh, right at the top of settings right here. Next up is a feature in Maps that people have been wanting for years. Uh, Google Maps has had this for quite a while, but it's finally built into iOS 16. So inside of Maps, you can finally add a multi-stop trip uh, to your directions. So you can see here, I've gotten directions to another city and here at the bottom, you can click on add a stop. So built in iOS 16, you can add, I believe up to 15 stops on your trip. So this is awesome. And it's a feature that people have been wanting for years inside of Apple Maps. Also new in Maps in iOS 16 is you'll have the option to see fare prices inside of Maps if your uh, current public transit supports that. So you'll be able to see how much a fare is gonna cost. 
And also, if you have a transit card uh, built into your phone using the wallet app, uh, your maps will be able to talk to that transit card and it'll be able to show your balance and tell you if you have enough credit on your transit card uh, to take that ride. And inside the maps app, you'll have a link that will allow you to top up your transit card as well. So I don't have that option here because I'm in Canada and I don't really use a transit card. But uh, if you use that feature, I have a feeling that will be very useful for a lot of people that use public transit. So next up is inside of Wallet. So the Wallet app got a small update where it can now track your purchases uh, using Apple Pay. So if you have bought anything on the web using Apple Pay and you open the Wallet app, there is a new button here at the top right and if you click it, you can see it is your orders page. So if you've placed any orders using Apple Pay on Safari, uh, all of your orders will show up here in a list and you'll be able to track your orders and see when they're gonna get delivered. And another change inside the Wallet app in iOS 16 is if you have a key for something. So if you have a key uh, for a hotel room, for example, you can now actually share that key securely using iMessage. So when you have your key inside the wallet app, there'll be a share button, and then you can send it using iMessage to anybody you want securely, and that person will have access, the same access that you have using the key on the wallet app. So the ability to share keys is really useful. So if you're in a hotel, you won't have to go down to the front desk and get another key, for example. So this is a really, really useful feature. So next up is a redesigned home app. So the home app obviously is only used for people that have a smart home or smart home accessories. So not many people use the home app right now, but it looks like Apple is trying to encourage people to use it more and they wanna turn people's homes into a smart home because they have finally redesigned the home app. It feels like it's been years since this app has seen an overhaul and I really like the way it looks now. So you can see the UI has been updated. You have a, a section at the top for quick toggles. I assume this will be more useful if everything in your house is smart enabled. So you have smart lights, a uh, smart coffee maker, a uh, smart alarm system, and even cameras will show up here. So I only have lights and my Apple TV showing up in my home app, but this will be very useful, especially with the redesigned UI if everything in your home is smart enabled. So uh, a lot of improvements to the home app are really appreciated. So next up is inside of health and it is medications. So we did talk about this in our iOS 16 rumors video and this one did end up coming true. So if you search for medications inside of health, you can click on it right here and you can set up your personal medications that you have to take. So if you click on add medication, uh, it looks like right now the function to scan your pill bottle is not enabled in this beta that should be coming later, but you can add your medication right here and you're able to set up a schedule and get notifications and also reminders as to when you have to take your medications. So I really think this is gonna help out a lot of people that have to take medicine every day. So next up is the fitness app and there are a few changes inside of fitness. Uh, one is when you open it up, now you see your steps and your distance traveled directly below your rings, so that's useful. And the next change is you actually get access to the fitness app even if you don't have an Apple Watch. So you won't get the stand ring and the exercise ring, but you will get the move ring. So even if you don't have an Apple Watch, uh, you can still get motivated by your iPhone to close your move ring every single day and uh, just get you a bit more active. So maybe that'll be uh, kind of an incentive to get an Apple Watch as you wanna close even more rings. But I really like how Apple is uh, opening up their fitness app to everybody even if you don't spend the money on an Apple Watch. Watch. Next up in iOS 16 is the ability to set up a device for a child. So I think a lot of parents are gonna find this useful. So if you get an iPad for your child, for example, all the parent has to do is hold their iPhone near the new iPad, and then using family sharing and iCloud, you can set up which child that device is for. So setting up a new device for a kid is a lot easier inside of iOS 16. So next up is updates to CarPlay. So this is coming later. It says it's coming in cars in 2023, but this is an insane update. So before CarPlay would only support one screen and Apple recently added the option to have a widescreen uh, version of CarPlay, but now they have gone a complete five steps forward and now they can completely take over the car's entire infotainment screen. So even the heads up display behind the driver that shows uh, the RPMs and the speed, that can now be CarPlay. Uh, you're able to control your car's temperature using CarPlay. So it's able to tap into every single aspect of your car's infotainment system. And I don't think really there's any point now in any car manufacturer making their own infotainment system just because CarPlay is that much better. So I really 
really like what Apple has done with the updated CarPlay. It's uh, coming in 2023. Uh, now, if only Apple could make the entire car, that would be awesome. So next up, another very, very small change. Uh, in my previous video, I mentioned how uh, you can now tap here at the bottom where it says search to get right to spotlight search. Uh, now there is kind of a new fun animation when you swipe down to go into spotlight, uh, that search box kind of enlarges and kind of zooms up to fill the screen. So I'll show you that once again, when you pull down, you can see that that search tab uh, kind of animates upwards. So a nice change in the UI there. So there you go. Those were even more features inside of iOS 16. If you guys want even more coverage, including iPad OS and watch OS, make sure to leave a like on the video and comment down below telling me what content you want to see on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.